not that as, as easy as it first seems, right? Um, and then you can come up for the, again, the general <coughs> equation of those ellipses. Okay, so we found the total e uh, potential at one five meters. Now, what is the potential energy of this system? So if I ask what is the total potential energy, as soon as you heard the word potential energy, you should think two charges. Single charge cannot create a potential energy. Potential energy is the potential energy of the binding uh, of the, uh, between those two charges. So now you just multiply 9 times 10 to the 9th times the charge of this, 0.2 times 10 to the minus 3, the char charge of the other one, 0.5 times 10 to the minus 3, divided by the distance between them. So that's 4 and 3. seven meters and you don't square the distance so that's it pretty much so C is pretty easy so that's gonna be negative 10 to the minus uh, 10 to the sixth 10 to the third so uh, then you can go like this like that so you can call that uh, 18 times 5 18 times 5 is 90 divided by 7 times 10 to the minus 4 minus 4 so 10 to the fifth 10 to the negative 4 that's 10 that's it negative 900 divided by 7 128.6, that's joules, and it's negative, negative 128.6 joules. So that's quite a bit, of, quite a lot, huh? If uh, their binding energy is, that's their binding energy. Now, do, do the, do, does the system like to be together, or do they want to go apart? They like to be together, right? Negative potential energy means they like to be together. The other way you can argue that is since they're opposite charge, they attract each other, their force. So that's two ways of arguing that. So if I want to ionize them, how much energy would I have to put? If I want to separate them out to infinity, I would have to put that much energy, right? To ionize them, it takes 128.6 joules of energy of uh, work and that now sh this shows you the connection between what we're learning and what you learn in chemistry they uh, in chemistry you do a lot of these you find the ionization energy of molecules and stuff um, so now the second the last part D says if you let the go of this what will happen what is their final velocity and assume that each charge has a mass of 5 milligrams and size of 2 millimeters. So since they like to be together, let's assume that once you let go of them, that nothing is holding them. So they come together, right? They're going to come together. They come together. and their velocity increases. They come together and their velocity increases. So find that velocity. So by the time they hit each other, right? Now, I made it a little easier because I said their mass is the same, their size is the same. So it's uh, a little easier to do this because uh, the distance between their centers, when they hit each other, the distance between their centers is equal to what? Twice their radius, right? The distance equals twice their radius, and they each have they each have the same final velocity since they have the same mass 
we know that their momentum must be conserved, right, from physics one. So if they have the same mass, m v final must equal m v final. So if m1 and m2, if m1 and m2 is equal to the same, then their velocities are the same. v final one, v final two. So then v final one equals v final two, which equals v final. So since their masses are the same, they, uh, their final velocity is the same. So what we're going to say is their total energy of the system must be conserved. E total initial must equal E total final. E total initial is kinetic energy initial plus potential energy initial. E total final is kinetic energy final plus potential energy final. Okay, and kinetic energy initial is zero because they, we, they were at rest when we let go of them. Their initial potential energy we already found, negative 128.6 joules. The kinetic energy final is the sum of their kinetic energies, so half mv squared plus half mv squared, since, since they're the same mass, just half mv final squared plus half mv final squared plus their potential energy final. Okay, um, I need to apply the formula again, kq1, q2 over r. Okay, it, the, their final potential energy is going to be even less than negative 128. It's going to be something like negative 200, negative 300. Because objects, when you let go of them, they, they always like to go towards more negative potential energy. Right? When you let go of a ball, when you let go of anything, right, the objects always like to go to less potential energy. So if this is zero potential energy, they like to go more negative. Right? So they always like to go more and more negative. So the final potential energy is going to be more negative than uh, negative 128. So maybe negative 200, negative 300. So it's going to be 9 times 10 to the ninth times... Uh, uh, Q1 times Q2 divided by the distance between them, which is two, twice their radius. So K is the K that we know, and the Q1, Q2, the distance between them is 2R. So now this one just becomes mv squared, and then now we could use, uh, what's their mass? Uh, 5 milligrams, right? So mv squared, so 5 milligrams, which is 5 times 10 to the minus 3 kilogram, v final squared, uh, and then here 9 times 10 to the ninth, their charges again, uh, 5 times 10 to the minus 4, negative 2 times 10 to the minus 4, divided by twice their radius, and their radius was, uh, I forgot, two millimeters. two millimeters, okay. So their radius was twice their radius, which is two times 10 to the minus three. This is going to be negative uh, the 2 and the 2 cancel. So you have uh, 45 divided by 2. 45 divided by 2, which is 22.5 times. Then you have 10 to the fifth. 10 to the minus 4 is 10. 10 times 10 to the th uh, negative 3. 10 to the uh, 4, right? So their final potential energy is negative 22.5 times 10 to the fourth, which is 22, um, 2.2 times 10 to the, so 225,000 uh, joules, negative 225. So as they're coming together, their potential energy is getting way, way negative, very negative. Okay, so now 
this thing goes over to the other side. 